Day two, hydrodynamic testing on a quarter scale Converse Cedar. You can see a short video of day one if you click on the link up there. So day two, a good day all in all was had. It was great to see this aircraft on the lake at speed, creating loads of spray, loads of noise, and a lot of interest. We do have some issues though, and in this update, I'll show you what those issues are, what we're gonna to do to rectify them so we can fly this prototypically. It's worth going through the takeoff phases of the sea duck because it's very different from a conventional aircraft. So phase one acceleration is where the hydrodynamic drag is highest and we need to unport the skis from a taxi speed of three knots to 10 knots. The second phase acceleration is from 10 knots to 30 knots where we don't actually have any directional control of the aircraft as the air rudder isn't able to overcome the hydrodynamic drag and the water rudder is working beyond its design limitations really. From 30 knots to 50 knots, the third and final stage of the acceleration. This is where we extend the oleos at 30 knots and this allows the ski a greater angle of attack, more hydrodynamic lift, we're able to raise the tail out of the water and get to 50 knots. As the drag is heavily reduced, the acceleration should be rapid. Get to 50 knots, rotate to 18 degrees and get airborne. Now that's the three acceleration phases of our Converse Cedar, just like the full size. So in the next video will show you actually what we did, which shows acceleration phase one and two, the ski oleos retracted and a maximum speed of 20 knots. With the aft body of the fuselage still in the water, drag is increasing indefinitely until an equilibrium is reached and the speed remains constant. If we extrapolate this data, it's clear that the maximum speed we can get is 32 knots. We only need 30 knots to extend the oleos, but we need to reduce the distance from 300 meters to under 75. And to do that, we need to reduce the hydrodynamic drag. We have four main issues all contributing to the slow phase two acceleration. The ski angle, the ski aft body design, oleo extension, and the engines. So we come to the most important part of the aircraft for the takeoff run, which are these hydra skis here. I've been banging on for the last few minutes about the ski angle, about the oleo and the aft body of the ski. And this is the ski angle here. With the oleo retracted, it's set at five degrees compared to the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. If we extend them, and they're extended pneumatically, we now increase that angle to 15 degrees. The problem we're having is that if one side has more load on than the other, these are coming out asymmetrically. And then because of that, we're getting a beautiful water skiing turn left or right, depending which has more load on it at the time of deployment. That's a problem because it's completely uncontrollable. It's a nice stable turn, but we have to back off the power and we can't explore that phase three acceleration. So to cure this, we're gonna change this to hydraulic actuation. In turn, we need to change the ski angle for the phase one and two accelerations. If we increase this angle from five to say seven degrees, we can get the water planing further back quicker, get the fuselage out of the water and it's that fuselage which is creating the most amount of drag at this point. It's really important we get that out of the water and increase ski angle should help us. The aft body of the ski here is gonna be changed. It's slightly flexible now. So we're going to make this completely solid and thereby encouraging the water to plane further back towards the aircraft CG. And that should in turn also help lift the tail. We're gonna have several aft body of the skis that we can interchange. And we're gonna change this length of the back point, which again should encourage the water to plane further back 
and be closer to the aircraft's centre of gravity. So that's the ski angle and the oleo. Now in the next few videos you'll see us deploying the skis at 15 degrees angle of attack on these hydro skis and you can see the issues we face with nice carving water ski turn left and right. You've got Dave Wiltshire from motors and rotors at the controls and the only thing left for him to do is to back off the power so they don't hit, in this case, the big jetty on the right hand side. So finally, we get to the engines. Now the problem with these, you may not be surprised to hear, is water. You might be surprised to learn, but it's not going in the front of the aircraft, it's being sucked in from the back. So what's happening at certain power settings, and we can see it on the video, is the water is being sucked in from the back, it's annealing this inconel nozzle here, and what was nice and round is now a wavy inconel mess. That's not too much of an issue. We have a bell mouth, and perhaps by Moving the bell mouth slightly aft, we can avoid this suction effect or reduce it. And we cannot also linger on those power settings. The main issue is when we decelerate with the skis at 15 degrees. What happens when the aircraft decelerates is it then decelerates really rapidly as the hydrodynamic increases exponentially. And that forces the pitch of the aircraft really high the back of the aeroplane sits into the water and because the deceleration has been so rapid we have this big following wake, following wave then rushes up the back of the aeroplane and in this particular engine's case it came up and it's gone straight into the nozzle, hit the turbine wheel, shot cooled it and I can now play a tune on this turbine. These will go back to JetCat for a service, we have a few spares that we can pop in and continue the testing on. We can avoid that big pitch up attitude at around 15 knots by making sure we retract the oleo. So the skis are retracting to around five degrees and then we can avoid that massive pitch up and hopefully it just do a nice gentle pitch down and we can apply a lot of power to hopefully avoid the following wave going up the back of the aircraft. So that's update two. So in summary, we've had problems with the ski Oleo retraction, we're going to change that from pneumatic to hydraulic. The aft body of the skis are flexible. We're going to change the length and make sure they're rigid. Also with the hydraulics, we can vary the ski angle to help with phase one and phase two accelerations. Turbines, we're going to send them back to jet cap. We're going to try and move that Belmar further aft and put some procedures into place so we don't get that huge pitch up attitude and swamp the turbines as if once that's happened, they really can't be used again. So that's update two, update three. Hopefully you can see us get into that phase three acceleration, get up to around 45 knots, tail completely out of the water, accelerating rapidly. And then we can move on to stage four, which will be flying the aircraft, which is what we set out to do from the very start of this project, to fly this Convair C dart prototypically off and back onto the water. Now I'll leave you with a few videos of the aircraft on the lake in various configurations and also one video from the point of view of the pilot inside the cockpit. Now the health warning with that is the cockpit's not finished, we don't have the scale detail in, we don't have the instrument panel, but it does give you a good idea of what it might look like in the finished model. <laughs>